This is mock A question 7. It is a collisions question the whole way through. So a sphere, a sphere P of mass 5M collides a stationary sphere Q of mass 8M at speed U. Q is like it's four meters away from a vertical wall. Okay, so I'm going to just sketch what's actually happening here. So we have P and Q. These are the spheres P and Q. P is of mass 5M and Q is of mass 8M. It collides, P collides at speed U at Q. And then we have, uh, it's four meters away from a vertical wall. So this distance here is Due to the collision, P comes to rest, so the final velocity of P is zero. Coefficient, from, if, coefficient between, that should say, restitution. So the coefficient of restitution between these two is E, and NE between this, where N is a constant. Uh, the spheres do not collide for a second time. Now, when I included that, So, the point is, this bit here I should have actually removed. So what that actually means, because P becomes stationary, it implies that the coefficient of restitution between the wall is zero. So actually, I apologize, that, that shouldn't be in there if you're looking at these solutions. You can try it again with that information now known. And let's probably get into the question. So should should it takes Q thirty two over four D seconds to reach the wall? Seconds. We're using the principle of conservation of linear momentum. Now we're gonna call everything related to P one and Q two. So M one U one is gonna be five M by U plus there's gonna be eight M by zero equals five M by zero because it comes to rest plus eight M by V. So we get that 5u, uh, once we cancel actually all the masses, I won't go too fast on this, and we cancel the zero terms, we get 5u is equal to 8v. So v is 5u over 8. Now time is distance over speed. Distance is 4, so 4 divided by 5u over 8. If we times top and bottom by the, of the equation by 8, 4 by 8 is 32, so it's 32 over 5 u seconds, as per the question, so QED. Now, excluding that, investigate if Q will rebound at the wall for a second time for all sum or no values of E between 0 and 1. So it's got this new velocity of 5 u over 8. So 5 u over 8. And this is obviously stationary. This is still 8m. That's 5m. So we want the we want v1 to get to zero. So we're now going to consider everything here to be one and here to be two. So if we apply PCLN first, uh, this is actually minus because it's going in the opposite direction. Uh, no, so it hits that with 5 u a, and then it re rebounds with n e. So we get 5 u n e over 2. Or 8. Whoops, not 2. In essence, just very tired. I'm doing all these questions in one go, but I thought I'd 5 at a time. So 5 n u over 8. So it's that. And the thing that we want is we want, yeah, v1 to be on 0. So with that, we have 8m times minus 5neu over h plus 5m by 0 equals, now, let's try to think of what happens. So when it rebounds, we want this velocity to be, to be positive. So because things, if things have a higher coefficient of restitution, they're going to bounce away further. So if we actually consider this velocity to be 0, we're going to find the minimum value of e, and then for all values above that, it'll rebound the other way and collide with the wall. Plus, well, we're going to have 5m by v. So again, cancelling the masses first, and then the zero terms, these, this a will cancel, and then this mass will cancel. 
is that we get minus 5 any u equals just 5v. So v has to be minus n u. Uh, so because this is still negative, what we need is for, uh, we can discuss a couple of things. So u is actually the initial velocity from all the way back here. So it can't be that because this was positive from part one, part two, part one. So it can't be that. E can't be negative and n can't be negative. So that implies that v has to be negative. But if that's the case, then this velocity here will mean that when the particles actually collide, this one will collide here, so this is before. If it collides after, then what's actually going to happen is that this sphere goes this way, and this sphere keeps going that way. But when this collides, it can't actually go this way. That's just not possible. So actually, when you think about it, for all values of e, so for uh, for all e, it actually won't collide with the wall again. Uh, I will actually just try use piece or Newton's law of restitution first before I jump to any conclusions straight away. So this is this is v two. So v one has to be zero. So n e u so minus minus equals minus e times uh, u one is that. So this is going to be f minus five n e u plus zero. So n e u equals five n e squared u. So if we cancel the n one of the e's and the u's, bang bang bang. We, aha, uh -huh, yeah, 1 equals 5e, so e is 0 0.2. That means, even though we have here, what actually works in LR, is that e has to be greater than 0 0.2 in order for this division to work. So when we considered actually the principle of conservation of linear momentum, is that this cannot exist. But when we combine it with Newton's law of restitution, we get that, um, in this case, e has to be greater, greater than 0 0.2. Yeah, then or equal to. No, it can't be or equal because it's zero. So e has to be greater than point two in order for that second collision to occur. I jumped to conclusions way too early. I have a tendency of doing that. I'm sorry. I'm just going to take a sip of water before I do this question. So if two spheres t and u, uh, one of them called speed u angle alpha, and uh, that sphere is stationary, coefficient of Restitution between the spheres is a half. Find the velocity of the spheres after colliding. Well, this is where we're actually going to have to apply both PCLM and NLR. So the sphere is identical. Uh, between the equal spheres, so that implies the same mass. So we have m by, it's colliding along the i, so we're going to use u cos alpha plus m by 0 equals mv1 plus mv2. So v1 plus v2 is u cos alpha. Equation 1. Next is NLR, which is a slightly smaller equation, so we can actually fit it in here. Is v1 minus v2 is minus a half times u cos alpha. So v1 minus v2, we can just write as minus u cos alpha over 2. Equation 2. So we can actually add equation 1 and 2. Come together, these cancel, and we get 2v1 equals that's going to become one half u cos alpha. So v1 is one quarter u cos alpha. And then, of course, to add them up to this, v2 has to be three quarters u cos alpha, which fits with that. Because one quarter minus three quarters is minus one half, which is part of that question. Now, the velocity is the first one. So v1 in vector form, we have the u cos alpha is changing. So we get minus, or one quarter u cos alpha i 
plus d sine z, so u sine alpha j. B2, it had nothing originally, so it's going to have a zero j in it, but we're going to actually have this as three quarters u cos alpha i plus zero j. Uh, both of them are in meters per second. So the velocity is from the angle between the sphere and the deflection. So one of them is going to be completely horizontally. So this one's going to go horizontally. And then this one, uh, one quarter. So that's going to be slightly like this. So the angle we're looking for, this is the initial velocity here, let's say, and it goes slightly thinner. And so we're just looking for this angle in here. We'll call alpha. No, we won't call alpha because that's... Uh, let's, go, let's go back to calling angle theta, why not? So we have this. Now, tan of the angle of this velocity v, so tan theta is sine over cos. So this can be u sine alpha over a quarter. Because alpha the u's cancel, this becomes 4 tan. So tan theta is a 4 tan alpha. So... That's probably the simplest way I can put it. There's no numerical expression for it because we're not told the angle, so we're not actually going to find a specific angle. But tan of theta is 4 times tan of alpha. Now, in both parts of the question, spheres are modeled as being smooth and of equal radii. What physical quantities might change if these assumptions are considered? Well, there's going to be a loss of energy, so you could say kinetic energy. due to energy loss in other places, uh, e.g. sound, heat, etc. Now, it says quantities, so it implies more than one. Uh, equal radii could imply that the angle of deflection is different. So angle of deflection. The spheres for radii. Because you think if you have a tiny one here and it hits a big one here, depending on where it hits, it could rebend differently. And that is the answer to question seven, Mach A.